Hey guys, Sean with Long Long Honeymoon here. In this video, we are talking Yellowstone. Specifically, we're talking about the animals in Yellowstone National Park. The goal of this video is to help you see all the animals you want to see when you visit the park. Yellowstone is teeming with wildlife, but Yellowstone is not a zoo. It's not even a circus. You can't exactly predict where the wildlife will be at any one time. But with this video, we're going to talk about where you are most likely to see them. The Big Five in Yellowstone. Bison, bear, elk, moose, and wolves. First up, bison. You're going to find bison in pretty much every corner of the park. But if you want to see the big herds of wild bison, I would first and foremost recommend Hayden Valley. Hayden Valley is located between Fishing Bridge and Canyon. The Yellowstone River runs through that area, and so the wildlife come into the river. There are some wide open plains in the valley, and typically there will be large herds of bison. Sometimes those bison will be right in the middle of the road. So be forewarned, there are often so-called bison jams in Hayden Valley, where the bison will just come out and stand in the middle of the road and traffic can't move along. But that's what you're in Yellowstone for, right? So when you come up on a big herd of bison, might as well sit back and enjoy the show. Please, if you see a stray bison calf, do not pick it up and put it inside your SUV. Yes, that really happened in recent years. <laughs> bison are actually a lot more dangerous than you might think, so you don't really want to crowd a bison or make a bison uncomfortable, because if you do, the bison could charge and gore you. When I was working in the park back in the early 90s, I recall one tourist being gored by a bison in the buttocks area, and legend has it that she lost her left buttock. By now, all of Yellowstone's bison have heard the rumors about bison burgers, so they really don't trust humans. With good reason, I might add. The mood of a bison can change on a dime, and suddenly you'll find yourself flying through the air with the greatest of ease. I guess in that sense, Yellowstone may resemble a circus. And by the way, in Hayden Valley, you can also occasionally see large herds of bison crossing the Yellowstone River. And that is truly a thrilling experience to witness. One other place I would recommend looking for bison in large numbers are the various geyser basins that are in the western portion of the park. You'll see some bison lingering around Old Faithful, but I'm talking about Midway Geyser Basin and Norris Geyser Basin. The bison like those geyser basins for the warmth of the steam coming off the geysers and also the various hot pots, and there are some hot springs back in there. So I really love seeing those iconic iconic scenes of bison wandering around amongst the geysers. It's the kind of scene that you only see in Yellowstone. Next up, let's talk about the star celebrity animal attraction of Yellowstone, bear. In Yellowstone, you will find black bear and brown bear. Brown bears are also known as grizzly bears. And I really like the name grizzly bear instead of brown bear because black bears can also be brown. Are you confused yet? You know, we really should have named black bears what they are, super raccoons. But I digress. Where can you see bear in the park? We have had the most luck seeing bear in the northern portion of the park between Tower Fall and Roosevelt Junction. Frequently, there are black bears roaming around that area. I would say this is also true between Roosevelt Junction and Mammoth Hot Springs. For whatever reason, we've had more luck seeing bear in that portion of the park. We have seen both black bear and grizzly. I have also seen grizzly around the lake area. Around Lake Yellowstone, sometimes the grizzly will walk down to the lake for the water. 
The Fishing Bridge RV Park is actually hard-sided camper only because of the bear activity in that area. You see, bears look at tent campers kind of like we look at a wrapped burrito. So supposedly there are a lot of grizzly in the lake area. I've only seen one in my life. I've had, for whatever reason, better luck seeing bear in that northern portion of the park. I have seen some bear in that area between Canyon and Norris Geyser Basin, kind of in the central area of the park. Bears tend to be active early in the morning and late in the afternoon and also at night. Although I do not recommend that you run around in the dark looking for grizzly bears. You know, even after going to Yellowstone for all of these years, I still have a strict policy of stopping for bears. In other words, I will stop and watch a bear if I see a bear. You know, quite often these bear sightings can be fleeting events because sometimes the bear will just move down, cross the road, and disappear into the woods. So if you do get the opportunity to see a bear, I would encourage you to stop and enjoy. Please do not chase after the bear with your iPad. And yes, I've seen people doing that. Occasionally, you will come across a bear that has come down to a water source, and they may linger at the water source for a while, so that's always a treat. Something else to know about bear sightings, occasionally there will be an animal carcass, perhaps an unlucky bison, that will be located in a portion of the park, and those large adult bison are so big that they can feed several bears for several days. So this brings up a point about the park rangers. If you see a park ranger, you might ask them, have there been any bear sightings in the park recently that we should know about? And you may discover that there's a carcass somewhere. They might say, yeah, there's a carcass over in Hayden Valley along the Yellowstone River, and the grizzlies have been feeding off of it for the past couple of days. That actually happened to us several years ago, and we had a fantastic time watching several grizzlies come in and feed off this bison carcass. We do have a complete bear safety video here on the Long Long Honeymoon channel. I would encourage you to watch that because in that video, we actually interview the chief bear biologist of Yellowstone National Park. But with regards to bear safety, if you are going onto a hiking trail, which I encourage you to do, you really don't need to carry a bazooka or assault rifle on your hike. A couple cans of bear spray will do just fine. And these days, you can actually rent bear spray in the park if you don't want to purchase it. You know, every year, millions of people visit Yellowstone National Park, and only a few end up being killed and eaten by bears. Hopefully that makes you feel better. Next up, elk. You know, the elk may be my spirit animal. First of all, they seem to be quite lazy. They enjoy lounging about on the lawns of Mammoth Hot Springs. Secondly, the elk may be a little more clever than it at first appears. You think it's just another dumb animal, but they figured out that they are safe from wolves if they go in to Mammoth Hot Springs and hang out with people. So maybe elk are not that dumb after all. Elk are actually the most abundant large mammal in the park. There are between 10,000 and 20,000 elk in Yellowstone, so you're pretty much guaranteed to see some elk. You'll occasionally see solo elk in other portions of the park. We have seen elk, especially around the lake area in Yellowstone, but if you just want guaranteed elk viewing, go to Mammoth. That entire area has a lot of elk. If you go from Mammoth over to Gardner, Montana, maybe to grab a pizza, you're likely to see some elk hanging out over there too. Sometimes you'll see elk hanging out around the geysers in the geyser basins, just like the bison. You're also pretty much guaranteed to find elk along the Madison River in the western portion of the park between Madison and the west entrance. Male elk can be very horny. Of course, I'm referring to elk horns or antlers that the male elk grow every year. 
the more horny the elk, I mean, the more horns or antlers the elk possesses, the more likely he will be surrounded by females. Did you know that a male elk during the rut can satisfy some two dozen female elk every day? Testosterone is a hell of a drug. It's really interesting to be in Yellowstone during the rut when the elk are romancing one another because those male elk will walk around and bugle. Kind of a haunting sound. I made that noise a lot in my 20s. Next up on the big five animals in Yellowstone, moose. Let me cut to the chase. You're probably not going to see a moose in Yellowstone National Park. I've been going to Yellowstone for more than 30 years, and I have seen a whopping total of two moose. I saw one moose in the early 1990s in the lake area. It was near Lake Yellowstone. And I actually took a photo of the moose with my film camera at the time. The second moose I saw in the far western region of the park that actually lies over in the state of Montana, not in Wyoming. So this was north of West Yellowstone in Montana. There are, I believe, more moose in that area. The moose population in Yellowstone have been declining decade after decade, but unfortunately, a lot of the moose in Yellowstone did not survive the great fires of 1988. And you know, when the Park Service was making the decision to reintroduce the wolf to Yellowstone, the moose apparently did not get a vote because the moose have not fared well with wolves as their neighbors. If you really want to see moose, I strongly recommend that you go down to Grand Teton National Park. Look for the Grovant campground area. You may not be able to go into the campground if you're not staying there, but all along the Grovant River, you will find moose. Unfortunately, you're just not going to see many moose in Yellowstone. Our final animal on the Big Five list, wolves. We have seen wolves in Yellowstone. You know, the wolf was reintroduced to Yellowstone National Park in the 1990s. Wolves are a controversial animal in that Yellowstone area. If you ever want to start a bar fight, walk into a local bar wearing an I Love Wolves t-shirt. Let's just say that at times the wolves enjoy wandering outside of the park boundaries and slaughtering sheep by the hundreds. That doesn't go over well with the local ranchers, but I digress. It's really kind of thrilling to see a wild wolf in person. Wolves technically are at the top of the Yellowstone food chain. If times are rough enough, wolves will eat grizzly bear. How hungry do you have to be to look at a grizzly bear and think, I'm going to eat that? The best place to see wolves is in the Lamar Valley area. We get a lot of messages from people who watch our videos telling us that they have had incredible wolf viewings in the Lamar Valley. The thing about wolves, they do not like being around people, so you are unlikely to have a close-up viewing of a wolf. However, they do have dens, and so the park kind of knows where the wolves are bedded down for the night, and they're constantly going back and forth to their dens. Probably about one-third of the park's wolves are wearing radio collars, so researchers and scientific experts know exactly where to find them. So at the very least, you kind of know where to go to spot the wolves. And with wolves, it's the same as with bears. There may be a carcass in the area, and the wolves will return to feed on the carcass. So if you really want to see a wolf, I would recommend not only that you talk to a ranger and figure out where they are being spotted, but also bring some binoculars or a telescope of some sort, because when you see the wolves, they probably are going to be pretty far away from you. We always carry a nice pair of Nikon binoculars. If you want to check out the exact model we own, I'll drop a link beneath this video. 
I have had close encounters with coyote. And if you've never seen a coyote in person before, when you see one, you might mistake it for a wolf, especially if it's a large coyote. You can find coyote pretty much throughout the park, and some of these coyote can be quite wily. If you see any coyote running around with TNT, Acme Corporation products, or gigantic magnets, run away. So for wolves, Lamar Valley, first and foremost, is the place to go. We have also seen wolves in the Hayden Valley area. You know, they say that all modern dogs are descended from the wolf. And when you look at our dog, you can definitely see a strong resemblance. All right, now it's time for bonus critters. First up, bighorn sheep. I don't know about you, but I didn't grow up with a lot of bighorn sheep running around my house. So when I see a bighorn sheep, it's kind of interesting to me. They're actually a lot of fun to watch. And that's because it's amazing how they can climb these cliffs. And it goes not only for mama and papa bighorn sheep, but also for the lamb. It's a lot of fun to watch the young bighorn sheep jumping around on the various cliffs. So my first recommendation for you to see bighorn sheep would be to go to that Mammoth Hot Springs area, drive over towards Gardner, Montana. When you're getting close to Gardner, on your right, you will see some pretty steep cliffs. And it is very common for bighorn sheep to come down near the road around sunset. Of course, you might see them at any time of day, but they're pretty active in those late afternoon, early evening hours. I have also seen bighorn sheep in the Mount Washburn area. The next bonus critter on our list are pronghorn. Pronghorn are sometimes called antelope, but pronghorn are not antelope. Pronghorn are pronghorn. I mean, basically, it's a cool looking deer. You can see pronghorn really in a lot of different places in the state of Wyoming, but in Yellowstone, look to the Lamar Valley and also to that mammoth area because pronghorn like both. You know, when I was a kid, I always got antelope confused with cantaloupe. Mom, why are we eating antelope for breakfast? <laughs> pronghorn are not cantaloupe. What about big cats, you may ask? Yes, there are mountain lion and lynx in Yellowstone National Park. However, the only cougars I've ever seen in Yellowstone were wearing yoga pants. Mountain lion are very difficult to see. And in fact, you may not want to see a mountain lion because if you're on a hike and you happen to see a mountain lion, rest assured, that mountain lion also sees you. And it's probably sizing you up for lunch. As for lynx, I have seen one lynx in that general area and it was actually outside the park down toward Grand Teton National Park. Next up, wolverines and badgers. Wolverine are extremely rare to see, period, anywhere. But recently a tourist made headlines by photographing a wolverine inside Yellowstone National Park. So you may see wolverine while you're there. As for badger, they're also pretty rare to see. I've seen one wild badger in my life, and it was in that corner of Wyoming. If you happen to see a coyote, watch out for badger. That's because coyote and badger, oddly enough, sometimes tag team hunt together. So if you see a hunting coyote, he may be accompanied by a friendly badger. What about beaver, you may ask? I'm not going there. If you've never seen a beaver in the wild, I mean a big, wet, hairy beaver, you're in for a real treat. Beavers are huge rodents. They can weigh from 30 to 60 pounds. Beavers have earned their reputation. Beavers can actually transform an area because of what they do to the local trees and to any running water in the area. In Yellowstone, the one place I can definitely remember seeing a lot of beaver is in the appropriately named Beaver Ponds Hike. You'll find this hike in the Mammoth Hot Springs area. It kind of leaves from Mammoth and returns to Mammoth. But I have done that hike a couple of times and have really enjoyed it. I would recommend it. Finally, let's talk about birds of prey. Anytime you're near some running water, keep your eyes peeled because you might see bald eagles. 
For example, along the Yellowstone River, you know, occasionally you'll see eagles and trees around there. And we had a very special experience in the canyon area one year. We saw a great gray owl. Not an average gray owl, a great gray owl. I bring up the owl to conclude because you never really know exactly what you're going to see in Yellowstone. So that's it, guys, a look at where to see animals in Yellowstone National Park. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I know that for many of us, Yellowstone may be a once-in-a-lifetime bucket list kind of trip. Rest assured, you're going to have a blast. You're going to love Yellowstone. I want you to be fired up and excited about going and get the most out of your trip. We try to go to Yellowstone every year, and every year brings new experiences and new excitement. So I want to conclude by asking all of you Yellowstone veterans, you Yellowstone addicts, chime in, let us know where you go to spot these animals in Yellowstone. Any kind of tips that you can offer in the comments section are always welcome. Thus concludes yet another episode of Long Long Honeymoon, the long longest running RV travel show on the interwebs. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe. We frequently do videos about Yellowstone and other national parks. Our mission here at Long Long Honeymoon is to help you get the most out of your travels. Until next time, I'm Sean. This is Long Long Honeymoon, where we say lo lo ho. Ooh-wee, it's a little chilly. Chilly willy. <laughs> Got on too many layers. I feel like the steak pop marshmallow man. All right, so we're at uh, the lookout point on the north rim of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Been here many times before, but never quite like this. Visibility, of course, is not the greatest, but it's definitely beautiful to see the snow falling in the canyon. Pretty striking view. Too close to the edge. <laughs> cool stuff. This video was brought to you by Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair. Remember, if you're in the market to have your RV coated with the industry's best ceramic glass protective coating, talk to Vinny, talk to Brian. They have opened a new ceramic super center in Tallahassee, Florida to take care of all of you on the East Coast.